Welcome to Calisthenics Kids, lesson 15. We are halfway through. In today's lesson, we are gonna learn a cool move called the pike presser. But before we get started, let's recap some of our old moves, get warmed up, get moving, get mum and dad involved as well. Off we go. So we're gonna start with a movement called the bear. If you remember, our hips are nice and high, arms and legs nice and long. So I'll show you what that looks like from the side. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips, bum up as tall as you possibly can, and all you're doing is moving opposite arm, opposite leg. So I'll show you that from the front. So bar up nice and tall, moving opposite arm, opposite leg. Nice and slowly. Nice and slowly. Chin on your chest. Let's try moving backwards as well. So opposite arm, opposite leg. And let's try and go sideways. Make sure you're doing this with me. You're not just getting lazy and letting your kids do it. I'm watching all of you. So bum up in the air. We're going to go hands together, feet apart. Feet together, hands apart, nice and tall. The taller our bum is up in the air, the more on the toes we are, the more demanding this is going to be. Now, if you're growing up watching this, keep your hands and feet closer together. I'll show you a quick example. So if I'm moving side to side and I'm like this, that's going to be a lot easier than if I'm like this. Should feel arms, shoulders, backs of our legs working really hard. Okay, next movement we're going to try is the frogger and then we're going to experiment with bent arms a little bit later. So frogger, quick recap. So starting in a bottom position like this, we're going to push the floor away as hard as we can and when we come down it should be slow and controlled. So push the floor as much as we can, slowly down. Push, 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 slowly down. My elbows end up inside my knees. Push, 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 slowly down. Now, if that was a bit easy, we're gonna up the ante a little bit, push as hard as we can. We're gonna try and get our hips on top of our shoulders. So elbows inside knees, push, 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 and slowly down. If you're doing this by without mum and dad, should be so quiet when you land on the floor, they can't even hear you. So even if you can only get a little bit off the floor, you're controlling that landing. So even if I'm doing this, I hold, 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 and I'm back down. So one more example of that. Push, 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 quietly down. Push, 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 quietly down. Excellent. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go in, uh, we're gonna be almost like a, um, we're in our push-up position, and it's almost like we're moving so slowly we can't even see us move. So we're in our push-up position, feet squeezed tightly together, and we move so slowly, it's almost like we're not moving at all. So I want to see how controlled you can be for one effort. Slowest person wins. And relax, and just as a little rest, you're going to turn your wrists back to face you, and just gently rock backwards. So we should be, this position here, just gently rocking back, You'll see why we need this a little bit later. And then from there, all I want you to do is just bend your arms and allow your fingers to creep off. So bend your arms, allow your fingers to creep off. Should feel a lovely stretch in the forearm. Okay, now we're going to try and do a dive bomber push-up. But if you're struggling with this, make sure you elevate your hands. So we're going to make sure if we struggle, we elevate our hands on the sofa. If not, what it's going to look like is we're going to start off in our press-up position. So we're in a press-up position. Push your bum as tall as you can. And then from there, you're going to bend your elbows and try and lift the floor. So bum up, try and sniff the floor, and then come round. Try and sniff the floor, and come round. As I said, if you're doing this, if you're doing this and you've got kids with you, elevate your hands. So we're just trying to sniff the floor, trying to come down with control. So as we come down with control, so bum up in the air, elbows it inside, just trying to sniff the floor and push back up. So bum up, elbows tucking into my ribs, just try and sniff the floor and come round. And one more, push back, try and sniff the floor and come round. Okay, have a rest. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to a movement called the bent arm bear. This is moving towards today's aim, which is going to be pike push-ups. Now the bent arm bear 
the stronger you are, the more bent your arms will be. If this is the first time you've tried it, a little bit of bend is fine. So, we're gonna go legs up nice and tall. We're still gonna move opposite arm, opposite leg, like in our bear, but we are gonna bend the elbow as much as we can. When we bend the elbow, we're making sure the elbows are bending backwards, not out to the sides. So, bum up in the air, chin on your chest, bend your elbows backwards, and we're moving with bent arms and straight legs. So let me know how you're getting on with this. It's a bit of a coordination challenge. Arms stay bent, legs stay straight. So let's try that again. We're gonna try that coming forward. So hips up in the air as tall as you can. Bend your elbows. And we're keeping arms bent, legs straight. You should be feeling this in your wrists, a little bit in your forearms as well. If this is the first time you've done it from a coordination perspective, don't worry if your legs kind of want to bend and your arms are always straighten out and you're not really sure, absolutely fine, but try as best you can. Hips high, arms bent. Again, if you can sniff the floor with this, you are super duper strong. So, bent arms, straight legs. Now we're going to try that moving backwards. I'm going to take my safety specs off, bum up in the air, bend your elbows, and you're just pushing back and keeping those legs as straight as you can. And coming forward, the slower you can move with this, the stronger you are. In fact, let's put that to the test. So if you're following along at home, I'm gonna shout freeze, and I want you to hold whatever position you're in. So if you end up, so just as a quick demonstration, if I'm in this position here, bent arms, straight legs, and I say freeze, I'm gonna hold that position until I shout go. So nice and slow, nice and controlled, freezing when I say so. So chin on your chest, arms as bent as you can handle, and off we go. And freeze, so hold that bent arm position, hold for three, two, one, and coming forwards again, trying to keep your elbows as close to the ground as you can manage, and freeze, hold for five, four, three, two, one, and last one, and freeze, hold for five, four, three, two, and one. So what you should notice, with just that little bit of bend, all of a sudden, forearms working very hard, hamstrings working very, very hard as well. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna ignore the arms uh, a little bit for now, uh, or at least not to keep it as focused on that. We're gonna go back to our one arm bridge, which we've worked on in previous lessons. So you're gonna start off in your crab position. From this position, you're gonna come up and over, imagining you're high-fiving someone behind you. So you're gonna push your hips up, fingers pointing backwards. From there, try and high-five somebody behind you. High-five, push through your toes, nice and tall. Try and bring your belly button up to the ceiling. Another couple either side. Excellent, and have a rest. Now we're going to go into something called the bent arm frogger. Now this is, or the bent arm monkey, sorry. Now this is particularly challenging. So what we are going to do, oh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start in our monkey position, but rather than going, this is what a normal monkey position looks like, just to refresh for those of you who are watching for the first time. Normal monkey, if you're an adult, it's kind of like you're a lazy driver. So you're gonna end up going one, two, and then three, four with the legs. So this is our normal monkey. So one, two, three, four. So it's right, left, right, left. So I'm gonna start off on this side. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. So this is our easy version. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. That's level one. Level two is we get a little bit of height. So we get this height by pushing through the floor. So I'm gonna show you level two now. So one, two, push through the floor, one, two. If your kids are doing this, should be super, super quiet. If they are banging about and making a racket, then they're not pushing hard enough through their arms. So let's try that again. So we're coming over the top. One, two, three, four. So let's have a go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Can we go backwards as well? One, two, three, four. One, two, Three, four. Now, when we get into lessons involving cartwheels, that's when we're gonna need this skill. 
So we're not going to try it today, but cartwheels, we would end up going one, two, and then the legs would come through three, four. Level three, if we've got it in the locker, is that, but with bent arms. So keeping the arms bent, so our elbows start nice and close to the floor, this is quite difficult. So elbows close to the floor, one, two, three, four. Elbows close to the floor, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Okay, from this position, just to get our legs moving, you're gonna imagine we are filming from the front. So we are going to film from the front, film to the side, to the front, and to the side. If that's easy, when you're almost filming a triangle. So I'm gonna film that bottom bit of the triangle, top bit of the triangle, bottom bit. So can I come along in my triangle? Who can get their hands up as tall as possible without ending up falling over? So base of the triangle, base of the triangle, tip of the triangle, and back down, have a rest. Okay, now we're gonna move on to developing the downward part of, in fact, before we do that, we'll just try another stretch challenge. So all you're gonna try is you're gonna have your bum up in the air. If you can get feet flat on the floor, great. If you can't, don't worry. From this position, all I wanna see is can you get your elbows flat on the floor? Now this is pretty tricky if you've never done anything like this before. If you haven't, just elevate your hands onto the sofa. So for example, if I pop the camera here. So if this is difficult, what you're gonna do is start with your hands flat on the sofa and you're just gonna go, in fact, let's just move that back. So if this is difficult, start with hands on the sofa and can you go hands flat? Now, the higher this box is, the, the easier it's gonna be. The lower it is, so if I come around here, the lower it is, the harder that's gonna be. So nice and tall. Can we get elbows flat on the floor? Can we come up? Elbows flat on the floor. So you know what to do if you're finding that easy. You know what to do if you're finding it difficult. I'm gonna let you have a go at that. Once you've had a go, drop me a comment. Make sure that I know that you're doing it. Any issues, drop them in the comments box. Okay, next thing we're gonna try is we're gonna keep one arm straight and we're gonna bend one arm. So I'll show you from the front then I'll show you from the side. So tall up with your hips. Can we keep one arm straight, bend one arm? I'm gonna bend the arms at the front and come back up and swap sides. So straight on one, bend the other. Bit of a coordination challenge. If this is difficult, put more weight in your feet. If it's easy, take more weight forward. So the further your weight is forward, the harder this is. The further your weight is back, the easier it is. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on to our theme of the day, which is our pike press up. We've done loads of bent arm work, so you should know what's coming next. So pike press up, just to show you in its full version, is when we're in our bear position with our bum up nice and tall, and we are coming diagonally down to let our nose kiss the floor. So that's our full pike press up, but before we get there, we've got a couple of boxes to tick off. Now, it's gonna be easier if you raise your hands up on something like a sofa. So if you're struggling, that's what you're gonna do. If you find it really easy, what you're gonna do is shift your body weight forward. So if I find it easy, I'm gonna bring my feet close to my hands. I'm gonna push onto the top of my toes. The closer this distance is, the harder it's gonna be. Try it for yourselves at home. You'll instantly notice the difficulty ramps up. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna just gonna try the lowering bit. So we're either lowering with our hands on the sofa or we're just lowering with our hands on the floor. So we're gonna lower to the count of three. You hear me shout stop, you pause in whatever position you're in and you hold. So do it with me. We're gonna lower to the count of three. If I shout pause, we pause. So bum up in the air, elbows pointing backwards, not outwards. So lower, gonna lower for three, two, one, and pause and hold. Hold for three, two, one. Knees on the floor. This time, we're gonna have a little bit of rest, shake it out. Try changing your foot position, either bring it further apart, bring it closer in, see what that feels like. So this time we're gonna lower for five. If you feel like you can't go any lower, that's fine. Just hold whatever position you're in. 
So we're going to lower for five seconds. So bum up in the air, lower for five, four, elbows coming in, three, two, one, and pause, and knee on the floor. Excellent. So now we've wiped the down phase, now we're going to work on the up phase. So all I want you to do is you can start wherever you want, but you're going to need some degree of bend in your elbow. So if you start right on the floor, hardest. If you start higher up, easier. So I'm going to start about halfway. So we're going to put ourselves halfway down. From this position, keep your elbows bent, bum up in the air, and just see if you can push out. So only going to go down halfway and push back. When you push back, it should be on a diagonal line. So we should see we come down on a diagonal, up on a diagonal. What we shouldn't see is this, down on a diagonal, and then end up pushing horizontal. Okay, nearly there. Right, now what I want to see is can you get your nose to the floor? Don't worry about coming back up, just worry about getting your nose to the floor and under control. You're doing this on the sofa to make it easier, you can get your nose to the sofa. So, bum up in the air, feet as close as you can tolerate, can we get the nose to the floor? Just kiss that nose to the floor, not trying to break anything. So kiss the nose to the floor, and then knees down. Let's do one more of them. So bum up in the air, and we're taking our nose, almost so it's forming a base of a triangle, and pushing back. Okay, we're gonna try the full pipe press up now, either hands on the sofa, or on the floor, and then we're gonna do today's movement challenge. So if you can string together a couple of these, great, go for it. If you can't, hands up higher is going to make it easier. Now, the closer I get my feet to my hands, the harder it is. So here is going to be super difficult. Back here, I'm putting more weight on my feet, it's going to be easy. So can we just perform one good rep? So elbows coming in, head coming down, and diagonally back. Maybe we've got two in the locker. Down and back. Okay, now we're going to do today's movement challenge. The movement challenge today is going to be on two different levels. So, level number one is just the slowest lower. Level number two is the slowest lower and coming back. So if you could do the longest pike press up, you win the movement challenge. Make sure you tag calisthenics kids, whether you're doing it as a parent, whether you're getting kids to do it, Again, if this is too difficult, raise the hands onto something like a, sh um, like a sofa. So slowest lower is level one. Don't worry if you can just lower, because we're building strength to slowly get us back up. Level two is all the way down, all the way up. Now I'm gonna get my watch. This is my live attempt. Now, I wanna make sure no one's cheating, so make sure you've got a stopwatch ready. So I'm gonna do down and up, because I think that might be all I've got in me today. I want you to either go all the way down, or you can come all the way back up, but pick a level that's right for you. Okay, so here's my stopwatch. I'm going to go in three, two, one, and I'm going to do the slowest lower I possibly can. So you're not allowed to pause, you must continually be moving, you're not allowed to stop at any point. So you should be moving so slowly, you don't even see me move. Okay, so that was mine. 17 seconds. I'm sure some of these kids out there can do better. I'm sure grown-ups can do better. Don't just let your kids do it. Join in as well. Thank you for watching Calisthenics Kids, episode 15. So we are halfway through. If you have missed previous videos, send me your email. Let me know where I can send the previous videos to. and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you very much. Calisthenics Kids, developing strength, confidence, and movement skill within children through bodyweight training. Thank you very much. Catch you in the next lesson.